Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today's video I thought would be an interesting one. I haven't really heard anyone talk too much about the Scott Barnes palettes since they came out, which isn't that uncommon in the makeup industry. Most YouTubers like to only talk about the products that are hyped at the moment, but there is at least the odd video here and there where you see someone using an older product. These seem to have gone somewhat radio silent, or at least I haven't seen anyone use them um, based on the people I follow. And I thought that might be for a reason, so I thought I would dive into. So I personally did buy these products when the whole hoo-ha happened on YouTube. So Tati collabed with Scott Barnes on a video, and I guess that was a really big introduction of Scott Barnes to the makeup community if you weren't familiar with his work through JLo and so on, which I personally wasn't, which is actually quite surprising because I I do know, I usually have my finger on the pulse in that sort of aspect. I think maybe his makeup style is a little bit different to mine. It's very, very glam and it's a lot of makeup. It's a lot, like he said in his video with Tati, it's for photography, stage, performance, it's heavy makeup. So in that, and I still have, I still do my makeup from things that I learned in that video. Like I still use my RCMA cream contour palette and like quite heavily cream contour. I don't think I was heavily cream contouring before that video. But I thought I would discuss the products today and tell you what I use and what I don't use and why. So let's start off with the Snatural eyeshadow palette. I actually love this eyeshadow palette. It's not My favorite did I even put it in my top eyeshadow palettes video? Let me have a look wait one second, please Yeah, so I did not put it in my favorite palettes video and I would say that that is correct as much as I do Love this palette and have no intentions of getting rid of it. I don't actually lean to use it that much I would like to use it more and I wouldn't be surprised that if I started to use it more if it would become one of my favorites because I actually love how my eyeshadow turned out today and I love how it's looking in the monitor and that sort of leads to me to my overall feeling about this brand and these products is these products photograph and look really good on camera I feel more so than normal con products I get confused as to whether these were truly designed for makeup artists or for consumers because the eyeshadow palette is definitely very good for the everyday consumer or the everyday makeup lover. I think it would be too much for the everyday consumer, but for the makeup lover, I would say it's a good little purchase. And the others I'll get into because I think the other palettes are actually more leaning makeup artists, but we'll get into that in a second. So this is a really beautiful palette. And like I said, it photographs feel it really well and I have no issues when using it. All the bl mattes blend really nicely. I would say they're medium pigmented, which makes it easier for them to blend out. I don't get any patchiness. They have great wear time. The color scheme is really nice personally could have gone with a charcoal brown because you've got like a really deep um, burgundy or you've got a really charcoal black but no truly deep brown the deepest brown I would say is woody which I would more say is mid-tone so a deep brown is missing and an inner corner highlight is missing so I guess that's why it didn't make it to my top palettes because the thing you need to create highlight and the thing you need to create depth is sort of missing I mean you do have it but you have to create, what if you just wanted a brown eyeshadow look? You can't really, unless you're someone that's happy to mix colors, which I do end up doing with this palette and it does work, but sometimes it would be nice just to have the shade readily available. The metallics, I don't dip into. You can see, I, I dare say they're not even touched. That's because I don't like metallic shades, so I can't comment on the metallic shades in this palette too much. I can, however, comment on Siren, Silver Screen, Hollywood, or Nightcap. I would say there's three different variants in the formulas so far as the shimmers slash metallics go. So like I said, Saucy, Brazen, Laced, Starlet would be one. That would be a standard metallic formula. Then I would go Siren and Hollywood. I would say they are more foiled. I wouldn't call them a shimmer because there's no micro glitter in them. So I would say they're more a foiled 
formula. And then silver screen and nightcap definitely have glitters in it. I love silver screen. It's such a beautiful taupey... Yeah, it's a taupe glitter shade, which I just don't have in my collection, which is absolutely fantastic. I would love this retro shade to be more pigmented and same with this vintage shade. Because they're medium shades and they're pressed so finely, they probably could have afforded to have a little bit more pigment. Overall, I love this eyeshadow palette. I'm never disappointed with how my eyeshadow comes out when I use it. And like I said, it photographs beautifully. So if I did do makeup purely for the purpose of photographs more, I probably would lean to this palette more. And I actually, it's going to be one of my biggest intentions for the next year is to use this eyeshadow palette more. I guess the only issue is, is there's not too much variance in this palette. I would dare say it's more neutral than it is cool or warm. You could definitely get warm leaning looks and you could get cool leaning looks, but overall I feel like this is a fairly neutral palette. I would say this is the most neutral palette I have in my collection. I do think he sort of hit the nail on the head with so far as what eyeshadow look you would see on JLo. I do think that this color story, although it's neutral, it's still, I don't know if I'm just telling myself this because I'm a neutral lover. This is different to most neutral palettes I have in my collection. Most neutral slash natural palettes I have in my collection either lean warm or lean cool, and I'd say most of them lean warm. So I'd say this is one of the coolest warm neutral palettes I have in my collection, and I love it. I love the variance of textures in here. Yeah, it's just beautiful. So all in all, this one is my favorite purchase as, out of everything I got in the Scott Barnes collection. Let's move on to the contour palette. He has repackaged everything, so mine looks a little bit different to what is currently being sold. I'm happy with my original collection packaging because I like it when pack, pack, I like it when packaging matches. That's like when I bought my most recent Pat McGrath palette, she did that limited edition pink packaging, but I did not buy that because I actually like my packaging to be cohesive. So you will have seen later on when I'm doing, or when I choose to edit this in, let's just say that, that this is an extremely pig pigmented palette. So today I went in with Carve and this is what I would say probably the lightest shade in the palette. Dice could potentially be lighter but it's more cool tone so I think it will f actually come off stronger when you use it. So I choose Dice because it looked to be the most neutral. I didn't want to go too warm and I actually knew from experience that these are very very pigmented. These are also the palette that made me realize how strongly there's some magic in this that it shows up really strongly on camera and it doesn't surprise me. Scott Barnes makeup is for photography so I think he really has designed that into his palettes quite well. If that was the intention, he's really nailed it on the head there. But in saying that, I do not lean for this palette because I actually bronzer, so I bronze to contour. So I actually never lean for this palette. And I also, the amount of pigment that's in it is just not ideal for me. I also love bake formulas lately because they seem to have a lot of like cornstarch cornstarch or dimethicone in them which like really refines down the look of my pores. I must say I do love how this turned out today but it's not what I lean towards. The only time that I have reached for these three palettes specifically is when friends have called me up and asked me to do their makeup which leads me to my next point. These I don't think are good for the everyday consumer. This is a lot of money for the everyday consumer. For what? How much of this palette are you actually going to use? There is a very small percentage of people that are going to fit into this red tone here. And yeah, you only really as a consumer need one contour shade. So this palette would be a no recommendation for everyday consumers, but it is a yes recommendation for pro makeup artists. I am very glad to have this for when my friends ask me to do their makeup, but that's a very, you know, I don't do makeup for my friends very often. So if I was a practicing makeup artist, that would be a better purchase. But for the sake of my, I do like having it because, you know, to call upon when my friends call me, but a little bit extreme to justify that purpose purchase just based on that. Next let's do the blush palette. The blush palette I was very excited for. So this is called the Chic Cheek palette. I hate that name. 
I hate all the marketing of this brand. Let's just throw this in right now. I don't love. It's very mm, bougie, cheek chic, glowy and showy. It's very like Hollywood and I'm just not like that. So all the branding and all the marketing I don't love. But yeah, chic chic, don't love that name. This is the blush palette. Now, I was very excited about this blush palette because he showed off these two colours, um, Mango Fizz and Rosé in Tati's video and it did look stunning on her. These blushes are lovely. This palette lacks depth though. This colour is the darkest colour and that would not work on the darkest skin tone. So this palette is not inclusive. I would say the whole line lacks a little bit of inclusivity. I'd say it goes to a deep and medium skin tone at best. These two blushes at the end here are actually blush toppers. I love that concept because I do love me a glowy blush. Let's use a more firmer brush and dig into it a little bit more. And hopefully you just saw in the application there, I do actually enjoy that on first application. I love a glowy blush and that is beautiful. Again, it's showing up in the monitor really nicely. Let's see if I can get a little bit on the nose. Oh yeah, that's stunning. That might actually be a winner for me. It's not hard to impress me when it comes to a glowy blush because they're just so far and few between. Yeah, overall I don't lean for these blushes. Why? Again, it's the same reason as with this palette. I have been leaning towards baked formulas. Again, they are very dimethicone and very cornstarchy and they make my pores look little. Again, these are a beautiful blush. I'm happy I have it in my collection, but it was a lot of money for something that I don't lean towards all the time. Same point as before, when friends call upon me, I am happy to throw this in my bag so that I have something to do my friends makeup with, but that is really a really eccentric reason to make a purchase this expensive. But yeah, I do reach for it seldom, not often, probably not enough to justify the purchase, but I must say the makeup collector in me is happy to have these in my collection because I like the option to be able to lean towards them. So yeah, I'm happy and I'm really happy I used it today. I got a lot of joy out of them today and at the end of the day, that is the purpose of makeup. It is to bring you joy. So those palettes do, so I'm happy to keep them in my collection. Yes, they were an eccentric purchase for something that, I, that aren't my ride or die, but like I said, I am happy to have them so that I can do my friend's makeup. If you're a practicing makeup artist, they would be my re recommendation. If you're a consumer, they wouldn't be. I can't beat that, that point down enough. And at the end of the day, they're just a really good standard formula. They don't do anything above and beyond other formulas I have in my collection, except for the Snatural palette. I do not have anything quite like these two formulas in my collection. I have micro glitters in my collection, but these are like, these are like the foiled shadow with glitter in them, you know, and very, very fine glitter, like the finest glitter I've ever witnessed with my visible naked eye. So yeah, I would say that they're the only ones that are above and beyond anything else I don't have in my collection. So I've left the last palette last for a reason. This is the glowy and showy palette, which is essentially the highlight palette. Now there's a few reasons why I don't love this. Number one, it's quite hard to pick up a lot of product. That's a good and a bad thing. Again, it's probably designed, in fact, I know it was designed for celebrity makeup and photography. So for celebrities, you do not, or makeup looks that you're doing on anyone, it's pretty rare that the common customer wants a really abrupt, bright highlight. Yes, there's definitely a market for that. The younger crowd and all the followers of Makeup by Mitchell probably love a really stark highlight, but that really is being phased out now. So you cannot create a stark highlight with this, but it's actually just genuinely really hard to pick up an even medium amount of product and apply it to your skin. You end up with a very soft, subtle highlight, which is just contradictory because you put your finger on it and you actually get a really metallic highlight. And if you applied it with your finger, you can. But 
I just find myself digging in there and not even getting, I like a pretty medium highlight and I just don't end up getting where I want to be with it. And it can just be kind of like frustrating. You're just like, I, I honestly don't feel like I see it. Then the second thing I don't like is the color scheme. The color scheme is just pretty odd. This leans pink, this leans purple, this is taupe. This is probably great on deep skin tones. I must say, so far as inclusivity goes, this would be the most inclusive out of all the palettes. These two colors will look really good on a deeper skin tone. This is the one that I use, and it just hardly shows up on my skin, but like I said, on a finger swatch, it does. Easy Glowing, same, would look great on a darker skin tone. And Sugar Rush, like a pink, again, that's probably going to look good on a medium to deep skin tone, but... For me and for what I use it for, it just doesn't fit. Again, I took this last week to do my friend's makeup and it turned out alright. It's just not my favourite. It's the one that doesn't hit the mark so far as the price point goes for me. And I have other palettes that are better formulas and better colour schemes. Kind of like the Denisa Marix Lightwork palette. I just fingered the shit out of my Lightwork palette. But yeah, so this colour story is more closer to skin tones you know the other the scott barnes so many bright weird shades you actually still want highlight shades to be somewhat close to a skin tone so that's what we've got here except for this purple one these are much closer to skin tones and at the same time still able to be inclusive but she did end up coming out with a darker palette which i think was the right move because this one really that shade is the darker so you could have if you were a pro, you could have this one and the darker one and you'd be good to go. Whereas with this one, I really feel like it only suits such a, a very specific minority. This formula is better too. It's more comparative to the Becca formula, which I really like. So that's my thoughts on that. That one is the only one that I truly like could have done without it. I, I also, highlights are just insane. I, have, I haven't bought highlighter in ages because I have my Jaclyn Hill ones they're my favorite and you just do not need that much highlighter and I know I'm gonna feel this way about blush next year because I bought so much blush blush this year and it's the same I've been slowing down on eyeshadow there's like a year it was like this year is the year of the blush the three years prior to that were the year of the eyeshadow the year before that was the year of the highlight and you just end up with <laughs> so much for one category now i do hate myself for not using these today but i am going to touch on the brushes briefly and i will do another video using my scott barnes palettes again because it is my mission with my channel that if i'm going to say that i like something then i continue to use it because not only do i want to get use out of my collection did you see that i just like hit myself in the face not only do i want to get use out of my collection i don't ever want to say something's great and then never use it again because is it really that great if you've never used it again that just winds me up about youtube how people are like i love this it's my ride or die and then you never seem to hear about it again so this scott barnes 61 i never use so this is the one where it's like a mini fan brush i would love to use this more i have tried to use this the concept is definitely there it's just genuinely not as easy as using a typical tapered blending brush so there is a learning curve with that that i haven't spent the time to do i actually think that would be a fun maybe follow-up video to this is me really trying to get the technique down with these brushes i think that would be a fun kind of makeup geeky video now the next one is the 63 and this is like a half fan brush Again, there is a learning technique to this and I don't tend to use it too, too much. When I have used it, I have been happy with my outcome, but at the end of the day, because I haven't spent the time getting the technique down, I find it easier to use a tapered blending brush. Now, the last one, I use this brush all the time. You've definitely, if you've watched any of my videos, have seen me use this. I love this brush. This is the Scott Barnes 62 and this is just a tapered blending brush. Now, I say this is just a tapered blending brush, but it's quite different to, let's say, a Smith or an, some form of natural fiber tapered brush. Tapered blush, because this is a synthetic hair. It's so soft and it's actually firm with being flexible at the same time. I know that sounds crazy, but it's firm, but with a long 
tooth, I would say, is what I mean when I say that. And I just find that this is a beautiful blending brush. It doesn't need to be clean too often, which is what I love as well. A little swirl around on a microfiber towel and she's pretty much good to go. This really gets into the socket nicely. I really only use it for socket definition and out of third definition. I definitely don't use it for my transition. You need something a lot bigger for that. But I love this brush. This is also up there. This is probably my favorite purchase along with the Snapchat palette out of everything that I've bought from his collection. Now the final point I wanted to touch on was would I continue to purchase anything more from the brand? I'm going to be honest with you, Scott Barnes doesn't get me excited. Like I said before, the marketing doesn't do it for me and all his recent releases have been singles and quads and that kind of thing and although for the everyday consumer it definitely makes sense that if you want to buy something if you want to buy something from Scott Barnes that you would buy a single rather than a palette. I almost feel with this collection that I have everything I would ever need from his brand unless he came out with you know concealers foundations and all that kind of thing and if they had really rave reviews then I would definitely give them a try but for now this is where I'm happy for my Scott Bal ba my Scott Balance. <laughs> This is where I'm happy for my Scott Barnes collection to be at and everything he's released since then hasn't got me excited. Did anyone see he came out with a yellow blush? And I was so curious, I did watch the yellow blush tutorial and I must say I have a lot of respect for him and his artistry but that yellow blush, <laughs> that yellow blush, I couldn't understand it. I honestly think it looked kind of terrible and I felt the use for it was so minimal but yeah I'll link it down below somewhere I'll put it yeah, Scott Barnes yellow blush tutorial so you can see for yourselves and see if you agree with me on that I also saw that he came up with a Snatural volume volume 2 and I did click on that I was curious but definitely not enough so to make the purchase now the one thing I was genuinely kind of still to this day kind of want but no I shouldn't is that limited edition palette now let's see if it's still available oh my gosh so it is still available it's the mesmerized palette now as I clicked on this I remembered if you do intend to make any Scott Barnes purchases don't pay full price they always have sales they always have discount codes even this is one of my favorite tricks lately make your cart up enter your email address, leave, and they'll try to grab you back with 20% discount codes. I'm telling you, most makeup companies do it, so do it. Um, so this is the Mesmerize palette. I'll put it on the screen here. There's a black shadow, a nighttime shimmer, black shadow, and then the rest are all like apparently this never seen before shimmer metallic shadow. The videos I clicked on were impressive. I'm genuinely curious about the formulas in this. I'm wondering if there's anything like that glittery foil shadow in the Snatural palette or not. Would love to know, but I'm not spending anywhere near 120 US dollars on something I'm just curious about that, but think I won't actually use that much. That's the only thing that he's come out with where I'm like, would love it. Would love to give it a crack. That is my overall feelings. My overall summary would be, I am glad that I have these three palettes. If I had my time over again, I would likely probably still purchase these three. Purely because I do think they photograph beautifully and I want to continue to use them for YouTube videos. And I do enjoy doing my friend's makeup and I do enjoy taking this with them, me. Is that enough to justify the purchase? That's sort of based on each individual. I've decided through making this video that that does justify this purchase because I truly enjoy doing my friend's makeup and I truly enjoy having these in my collection. You know, when I pull out my drawers and I see the Scott Barnes, I see my Natasha Turner, I feel happy. And that is the point. You know, Marie Kondo said, spark joy. If it doesn't spark joy, get rid of it. And if it does spark joy, you get to keep it. And as long as I've used them, which I have, then it's allowed, in my opinion. The only one I wish I didn't get, for reasons summarized, is this one. Now, I would love to know, I would love to see more people do this video because some people raved about them, said they were their ride or dies, and then radio silence. 
never heard about them again. So I'm just genuinely curious what happened there. Overall, I am happy with these purchases. I don't regret them. They still spark joy for me, but I do not lean for them. I do not reach for them that much. I just have other things in my collection that I use a lot more. I would definitely like to continue to use them for the purpose of YouTube because looking in the monitor right now, I think they are photographing really well, which is what I think their intention was. That is my overall point for all these palettes and which is why I don't think I see people talking about them very, very much. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I am definitely going to write it on my list to do a follow up where I try really nail these brushes down because I'm genuinely frustrated that I didn't use them today and I think that would just be an interesting video. I also do have intentions to do a follow up on my Natasha Denona brush collection because that is like my most watched video I think and it's still my most watched to this day and it bothers me because that is such a terrible video. But I would like to do on camera using her makeup brushes with Natasha Denona's her theory, would you say, her technique? She has a very specific technique with her specific brushes and I would like to give that a crack on camera too. I have tried to give it a crack in my real life but I thought it would be fun to make a video of it. So anyway, that's it for today. That was a lot of talking. I hope this video isn't too long and it was a lot of me repeating that same point but I can't say yes, they were a good purchase or no, they were a bad purchase because they do really fall in the middle there for me. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Have a great week, weekend, wherever you are, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!